Today, as I look at the, uh, the results, we're doing a, a fine job of removing BOD, TSS, ammonia, and uh, phosphorus, as well as fecal coliform. Our CBOD effluent numbers leaving the plant are less than two per per million. We have our phosphorus leaving the facility under, our limit is one milligrams per liter monthly average, and we're, we're I think we're about a 0.6. Okay. And TSS numbers are below 5 milligrams per liter. Two sides to the treatment process, one's the industrial side and then one is the municipal side and at the very end then the uh, flows combine and we have one effluent leaving the plant and then we discharge, we discharge to Hog Creek. Broke ground in October 2008 as far as construction. But we actually been, you know, this plant we've been, you know, planning, designing, constructing for over, you know, five to six years. We started planning in uh, 2005, and then we went into design, and then, like I said, you know, we broke ground out here in two th about October of 2008, and then, you know, we pretty much commissioned, started the plant, you know, started taking full from the old plant at the end of August of 2010. So the whole program was uh, 86 million, about 86 million dollars. We are well under that, but uh, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of it was financed through a loan through the PFA, and did receive some. I believe there were some state grants and and some state grants that that were received, but a majority of it is being paid, you know, by the residents. Well, this is a big improvement environmentally for, for Hawk Creek and, and downstream, uh, I should say users, but people downstream. Uh, the impact, uh, you know, we're going to be removing a far greater amount of phosphorus, and I've been told um, we would be removing 650 some pounds per day of phosphorus. So environmentally, phosphorus, we'll see a phosphorus improvement. And as well as uh, an ammonia improvement, because we are, uh, so the plant doesn't nitrify, so we will be removing ammonia. We have an ammonia limit, and uh, so we'll see improvements on that end as well. Um, you know, I'm not familiar with what a typical wastewater treatment plant looks like, but uh, you know, the the speaker that was uh, running the tour did an excellent job of uh, showing us what what the whole facility entails and I think it looks like a, a first-rate job. Something like this comes along and we're expecting reductions in the numbers that I've calculated roughly 55 percent reduction in total phosphorus at our outlet site so that's 65 miles downstream from where they're outletting the, the effluent water and still that dramatic of a decrease and obviously much much higher decrease of uh, total phosphorus at our Priam monitoring site, which would be just a half mile down from where they're outletting. The Minnesota River, there's a impairment uh, on the 303D list of impaired waters that uh, is for dissolved oxygen. And uh, one of the main drivers of a low dissolved oxygen content can be high phosphorus concentrations. If you get high phosphorus concentrations in low flow situations, they'll lead to algae blooms and that'll take the oxygen right out of the water. So reducing this phosphorus is, is a, addressing that impaired water, the Minnesota River.